government is something that the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. And you walk with him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstrott. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. The further I go in these things, worshiping the Holy Ghost and walking with him by saying words, the more I come to realize that this is for me. Say, this is for me. This is for me. Regardless of what anyone else does or what anyone else thinks, I walk in it, I live it, and if people want to come with me, they can come with me. <laughs> but if not, it's nothing, it means nothing. Using the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost, is not a thing in most circles. You understand this, right? Those words just aren't found there. But it is a new manifestation of the Spirit. That if you do it, listen, if you do it, it will take you someplace that the other people who don't worship Him as God can't go. They can't go here. And it's not something that most people do. That most people teach or have ever heard and it's certainly not a place therefore that they can go to but not only is worshiping the Holy Ghost a new manifestation of the Spirit say new manifestation, new manifestation. Of, the Spirit. of the Spirit and you can understand that there's a new manifestation of the Spirit yeah. that he presents to you because you're a worshiper of him but there's also not only a new manifestation of the Spirit, there's a new administration of the Spirit that comes along with it. And he says, in that administration, I'll teach you how to speak. Can you hear this? I'll teach you how to speak. I'll teach you how to think. I'll teach you how to govern. Now you remember Solomon, right? Mm -hmm. Solomon built the former temple, and we have scriptures that say the latter temple will be greater than Solomon's. Mm -hmm. Say greater than. Greater than. Which means it's greater than. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we are that latter temple. But we also know that Solomon was at his at the time he was alive, Solomon was the richest man in the world what's that say for the greater latter temple they're gonna be poor uh, I don't think so but Solomon did not ask for wealth and riches Solomon asked for wisdom to govern say wisdom, wisdom. To, govern. to govern so what he was given was wisdom to govern and that caused him to become the wealthiest man in the world is it going to be different for us in this latter day no government is something that the Holy Ghost does say it government, government. is something, something that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost does. does first Corinthians chapter 12 and then verse 28 and God hath set some in the church first apostles secondarily prophets thirdly teachers and after that miracles then gifts of healings helps governments mm. are you here yeah governments God the Holy Ghost has set governments this is in your Bible yes. now these things are not just skin deep governments these things go as deep and far-reaching as they possibly can just like any of the other Word of God say far-reaching far 
expansive you can have a shallow apostle the shallow definition of apostle and a lot of the church would simply say the oh that's a missionary because he's a sent one with a message we sent him out he goes to a foreign country he has a message he's an apostle mm -hmm. and that's a that's a small definition that's okay but there can be deeper definitions of an apostle someone sent to the body of christ with a message and that can be far-reaching and as and as expansive as an apostle could go that's what i'm trying to say here mm -hmm. same thing with a prophet a prophet could be a very you know shallow prophet and don't don't criticize me over this i'm trying to make a point a shallow prophet could be somebody that comes up and tells you well tomorrow you're gonna get a raise mm -hmm. <laughs> say tomorrow, tomorrow i'm gonna get a raise get a right raise. now there's nothing wrong with that or there could be a prophet who's called to the nations who's literally saying things that have uh, weight to the way governments function and operate mm -hmm. right yeah i'm making my point here it, these things don't have to be just surface level same thing with the gift that god has set in the church of governments say governments, governments. all right that's enough i think you got it first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 5 and there are differences of what administrations We're talking about the Holy Ghost there are administrations and I present to you differences of governments by the same Lord verse 1 says concerning things pertaining to the Spirit I would not have you ignorant have we been ignorant of this I think so back to verse 28 and God hath set God hath set governments fate a complete a thing already accomplished yet not realized the glory of that particular gift and calling has not yet been realized but it's already been accomplished so this is a primer tonight exposing you to where we are going if god permit and at some point he's going to permit these things because somebody has to fulfill all scripture mm -hmm. before the end can come right go to hebrews chapter 6 and verse 3 and this we will do if god permit this we will do if God permit say this we, this we. will do we'll if God permits God right so the we will do it verse 4 for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost or partners with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. who is that talking about that's talking about you we will do this if god permit mm -hmm. verse 5 and have tasted of the good word of god how do you taste something with your mouth and with your tongue usually right mm -hmm. i don't know you can try tasting something with your eyeball Ooh, that looks like it would be delicious but that's not really tasting nope. you taste with your tongue have tasted the word good word of god which means you have the word of god in your mouth and have tasted it and the powers of the world to come powers of the world to come would be speaking of governments are you here mm -hmm. we've tasted the word of god and powers i present to you of governments these powers among other things are governmental not governmental mm -hmm. governmental if we don't preach these things you can't enter into them and somebody has to isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 to the law and to the testimony <laughs> sounds like something you can put on a billboard or raise your hand as a commitment to the law and to the testimony what would the testimony be speaking of it so to the word and to the speaking of the word huzzah 
if they speak not according to the word it is because there is no light in them the other way could be said about it if there's no light in them they can't speak according to this word so you've got the word and you've got the light and if you have the light you speak according to the word if you're speaking according to the word you have the light mm -hmm. so we rule and govern by light by the word and by the light that's in the word i love the light john chapter 3 verse 20 words of jesus for everyone that doeth evil hates the light neither comes to the light lest his deeds should be reproved but he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in god and many will twist the things that i've been saying because they're personally and religiously prejudiced against these things not wanting their deeds to be exposed for instance if i'm right that you should be worshiping the holy ghost and walking with him as god in the earth and you haven't been you would take issue with the things that i've been saying which would cause you to walk in darkness not in the light but listen you cannot reach into the past and receive what i have for you you must reach into the light in here i see my way forward i see my way clear the road ahead is prosperous and glorious oh it's wrought with pitfalls no it's not it's bright it's clear i see my way forward and i can have this and i can do this say i can have this i can, have this. I can, do, this. I can do this it's all in here have you heard me say that before mm -hmm. it's all in here it's a kingdom mm -hmm. in here a kingdom of light now i hope you're ready for this this new manifestation this new manifestation of the spirit is greater than speaking in tongues and i'm not against speaking in tongues am i against speaking in tongues no. i preach on speaking in tongues i speak in tongues every day and in many ways more than you all mm -hmm. but this new manifest listen this new manifestation of the spirit is greater than speaking in tongues tongues and speaking in tongues was the beginning it was literally the very beginning and somehow you don't think the end is supposed to be greater than the beginning mm -hmm. acts chapter 2 verse 4 and they were all filled with the holy ghost right this is the beginning say this is the beginning this is the beginning they were filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance it was the beginning we should have been as a church speaking in tongues for two thousand years where should that get you somewhere besides just speaking in other tongues mm -hmm that's the beginning they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began since then we've had a rebirth of glossolalia which is speaking in tongues we all hear that when we go to Bible school somewhere in the 1900s right we had a revival of it people began speaking in tongues again and ever since then we've been trying to get back to the days of Pentecost trying to get back trying to get back we weren't going to the future we were trying to get back to the initial thing oh if only like the day of pentecost i know i've been a preacher for a long time 
as if the culmination of all ministry is somehow to get us back to the beginning <sighs> almost angers me now and we can say we made it you made it back to the beginning we don't want to go back to the beginning the new manifestation of the spirit is greater than the beginning manifestation this listen this new manifestation of the spirit knowing him as the spirit of light the new manifestation of the spirit is greater than that i'm not discounting speaking in tongues i speak in tongues and preach on it you need to be filled with the holy ghost speak with other tongues but that's the beginning first corinthians 12 7 says the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man for good and profit the new manifestation of the spirit the spirit of light is for good and profit the holy ghost is a spirit of light i am a spirit of light he's the capital s spirit of light i'm a lowercase s spirit of light and by beholding him i change second corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty verse 18 but we all if god permit we all with open face beholding as in a glass or mirror the glory of the lord what lord this spirit lord are what changed we are changed by beholding him and his glory into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit lord he's a spirit of light you know the word glory here literally can be translated glimmer his glimmering because he is light and this light this light that we're talking about i'm not talking about the light in the room okay people get weird with this this light that i'm talking about this light his light is a transformative substance we're changed by beholding it it transforms us it's a substance we behold that transforms us into something else it's a transformative substance that you obtain or you don't obtain which is the case of most people because they don't behold him literally translated glimmer or shine you ever look at something that's shining in the sunshine you have to look away because the, the brightness of it a bright spot that you move towards because the increase is there now warning seeing this will ruin you and not like the head of medusa you know the lady with the snake hair mm -hmm. people saw her and they were turned to stone i'm not talking like that i'm saying seeing this this glory will ruin you because you won't care about anything else well without getting into the weeds too much glory the word glory here and let's read it again it says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory right we're beholding we're looking at this glory the word glory in the greek is the word doxa and it means a glimmer or a shine we're beholding the glimmer we're beholding the shine of the lord the holy ghost the hebrew translation for glory is kabod and it means weighty a weighty substance you see where we're going here we're combining the light the glimmer the shine of the glory of the new testament and the weightiness of the old testament mm -hmm. where this light has substance it has weight heavy like gold you ever lift like a brick of gold it's very heavy there's mass in this light there's weightiness 
to this light there's substance to this light now scientists falsely so-called have theorized that light has no mass but they're saying anything that has mass and is moving at the speed of light it becomes too heavy they would say that a grain of sand moving at the speed of light if it hit the earth it would destroy the earth it would go right through it that's how weighty it gets things that move closer and closer to the speed of light get heavy get heavier you can see why this substance is very heavy well there is mass to this light that we're talking about it's the weightiness of god himself old testament meaning heavy new testament meaning shining like light and everything is in here in this light a complete kingdom say a complete, a complete kingdom. kingdom how heavy is that you ever try to lift a complete kingdom well the Holy Ghost has glory can you give me that yes. he must have glory for you to visibly see it for you to look at him and be changed by that glory he must have some glory mm -hmm. by beholding his glory we are changed into the same thing it's a transformative substance that we behold Moses remember him yeah. Moses said show me your glory you want to look at it Exodus chapter 33 and verse 18 he said I beseech thee show me thy glory then God said I will make all my goodness pass before thee God's glory is his goodness say God's glory, God's glory. Is, his is his goodness what do you think God's goodness will do for you will that transform you he says I'll pass all my goodness before you and that's his glory his goodness is unlimited wealth supply and abundance cannot be scaled you may say oh that I could clothe myself in this glory that'd be a foolish thing to say if I could clothe myself in this glory you shall that's the whole point of beholding him is that that substance that he walks and lives in gets on you say gets on, me. gets on me we are to be changed from one to the next to the next to the next and this and this does never stop my future is great my future is glorious my future is clean in this place of worshiping him my future is brilliant brilliant it's bright it's already been established have these things already been established he's walking in them it's already been established i just need to move into it like putting on a robe clothing myself with light as with a garment psalms 104 verse 2 says that's what god does he clothes himself with light as with a garment these are powers of the world to come or the WTC as I like to say <laughs> a literal kingdom of light and in here is a light based currency listen to me in here is a light based currency get some say I've got this, I've got this kings come to the brightness of my rising can you see this brightness now mm -hmm. kings are heads of kingdoms mm -hmm. right is this too difficult mm -hmm. well this sounds completely different than anything i've ever heard before mm -hmm. where have you been 
I can tell you what you haven't been worshiping the Holy Ghost enough Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 arise shine say shine. shine the literal definition of the word glory in the New Testament right arise shine for thy light thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee is this in your Bible yes. for behold the darkness shall cover the earth yeah yeah and gross darkness the people no kidding but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee meaning you're walking in it you've received it you've been transformed by it I'm walking in it chapter and verse verse 3 and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising and kings come and bring their kingdoms with them or they're no longer kings yeah. are you here mm -hmm. if a king comes to the brightness of your rising and he leaves his kingdom to come to it kingdom behind he's no longer a king he was a king it didn't say that and was a king comes to the brightness of your rising the established order of governments shall change church government no doubt but otherwise all governments shall change you understand these were gentile kingdoms that he's talking about that come to the brightness of your rising they that don't worship me the Holy Ghost are simply built on the wrong foundation and a change has to be made for in these days the Spirit Lord shall rise upon you and give you great wisdom and understanding that supersedes that of Solomon in his day the anointing of governments shall rest upon your shoulders as you walk with me the living God in your day in this day in this hour we give you praise and glory for it in Jesus name amen, amen. if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me Holy Ghost I worship you you are the living God I thank you that you are coming on me your glory is on me and I'm being changed I'm being transformed into something completely different I worship you in Jesus name amen Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost your 